We are back to our presentation on different types of liabilities. Right now we are covering different types of current liabilities. Next up, payroll and payroll taxes payable. When you think about the term payroll, it refers to salaries as well as wages. Salaries mean that you are paid a set amount per pay period. That means you're earning a salary. Wages says you are paid an hourly rate. So depending upon the number of hours you work each pay period, that will determine your overall compensation. Determine the payroll involved computing three amounts, your gross earnings, your payroll deduction, and what is known as your net pay. All right. So assume that Cargo Corporation records the payroll for the week of March 7. Now the gross amount earned by the employees, that is an expense for the employer. So we would debit salary and wage expense for $100,000. As you all know, there are deductions being withheld from your earnings each paper for things such as FICA taxes. FICA stands for federal, I'm sorry, for Social Security tax and Medicare taxes. There are federal income taxes as well as state income taxes. The deductions withheld from your pay each pay period is recorded as a liability by your employer. Why is that? Because these funds are owed to the various governmental agencies. FICA tax go to the federal government, so does income taxes, federal income taxes, and then the state income taxes belong to the state government. So these deductions must be paid by this corporation to the government at some time throughout the accounting period. Also, most of the time, we're not paid at the end of the pay period, but paid at a later date. So if the pay period may end this Friday, you may get paid the following Monday. So salaries and wages payable, this shows the net amount that is owed to the employees. In this case, the amount is $67,564. So this will be the journey entry to record payroll at the end of the pay period. Now, when we actually pay the employees, we're going to pay them the net amount that is owed. So when the employees are paid, you will debit salary wages payable for the net amount of 67,564, credit the cash account for $67,564. So these are the transaction one to record pay, pay, payroll at the end of the pay period. And this will be the entry to record the actual payment made to the employees. Now, there are certain taxes that the employer has to pay on behalf of their employees, such as FICA taxes, federal and state unemployment taxes. Okay? When we are recognizing and recording the taxes that are owed by the employer, we debit account title called payroll tax expense. Now, recall from your applied accounting days, FICA taxes, which are Social Security taxes and Medicare taxes, have to be matched by the employer, meaning that whatever amount was withheld from the employee's earning, that same amount is paid by the employer. So going back to our previous journal entry, where the total gross earned $100,000, this will be the journal entry also made at the end of the calendar period to recognize the taxes owed by the employer, all right? They would debit payroll tax expense, credit FICA tax payable, this is the same amount withheld from employees earning, recognize the amount owed for federal unemployment taxes, 
and the amount owed for state unemployment taxes. So there are pretty much two set of journal entries made at the end of each pay period. I'll go back. You must record the payroll information at the end of each pay period along with the payment made to the employer. You must also recognize and record the taxes owed by the employer at the end of the pay period. All right. Employer payroll tax do not include A, B, C, or D. A, B, C, or D. The correct response is letter C. The employer has to match the FICA taxes withheld from the employee's earning. They must also pay federal and state unemployment taxes but the employer does not match the federal income taxes withheld from the employee's earnings. What do we have here? Anatomy of fraud. We have Art, who is a custodial supervisor for a large school district. The district was supposed to employ between 35 and 40 custodians as well as three or four substitute custodians to fill in when regular custodians were absent. Instead, in addition to the regular custodians, Art hired, in parentheses, 77 substitutes. That said three or four. This says 77. In fact, almost none of these people work for the district. Instead, are submitted time cards for these people that he hired, hypothetically, collected their check at the district office, and personally distributed the check to these, quote, employees who did not actually exist. If a substitute check was for $1,200, that person would cash the check, keep $200, and pay Art $1,000. So pretty much Art put people on the payroll who really weren't employees and would write a check to them and that person would get out of check 200 and Art would keep the remaining 1000 mm -mm -mm. Shame on you, Art. Art collected a total of, before getting caught, $150,000. Now I know you say that's small change compared to what Rita Cronwell stole in the video we watched back in chapter seven. Okay, let's get back to our chapter 10 discussion. It says during the month of September, late corporation employees earn wage of $60,000. Withholding work for FICA taxes, federal income tax, and state income taxes. Costs incurred for unemployment taxes were $90 for federal and 150 for the state. Prepare the journey intro of September 30th for A, salaries and wage expense, and salary wages payable. Assume that all September wages will be paid in October. All right? So pretty much you're asked to do one, record the payroll information. Drink some water. At the end of the payroll period. All right, so the gross amount earned by the employees, you record that as being salary and wage expense. The deductions withheld from the employee's earnings, record those as payable such as FICA tax payable, federal income tax payable, and state income tax payable. Then the net amount owed to the employees Go to account title called salaries and wages payable because we won't pay the employees until the month of October. That would be your first journal entry made at the end of the pay period. Now, the next entry is to recognize and record the taxes owed by the employer at the end of the pay period. Recall that the employer must match the FICA taxes withheld from the employee's earning. They have to also pay unemployment taxes for federal unemployment taxes and for state unemployment taxes. 
So you would debit payroll tax expense for the total amount owed by the employer. That total was $3,740. Because the taxes have not yet been paid, we recognize liability accounts such as FICA tax payable, Federal Unemployment Tax Payable, as well as State Unemployment Tax Payable. These will be the two journal entries made at the end of the pay period to record all of our payroll transactions. All right. We're now going to make a shift from current liabilities over to what's known as long-term liabilities, beginning with bonds. James Bond. Okay, just kidding. What are bonds? Bonds are a form of interest-bearing notes payable issued by corporations, universities, and governmental agencies. Now, I hear what you're saying. You're saying, I thought bonds were a form of investment. And bonds are a form of investment if you are buying bonds. But if you are issuing bonds, it means you are borrowing money. And bonds are a form of debt for the issuer. The person who buys the bond, the bond holder for them, is going to be an investment. So if you buy bonds from a corporation, from a university, from the government, for you, yes, you're the bond holder. It is an investment. But for these organizations, bonds are a debt because they're borrowing money and those funds must be repaid at some point in time in the future. Now, there are different types of bonds that we call secure bonds and unsecured bonds. If a bond is secured, there are specific assets of the issuer pledged as collateral for the bonds. So sometimes real estate is used as collateral. So if the bond issuer does not pay the amount owed to the bond holder, the bond holder has the right to receive those assets that's been used as collateral. If the bond is unsecured bonds, it means that there are no specific assets used as protection for the uh, bond holder. So if bonds are secured, there are certain assets that the bond holder can receive if their money isn't paid back. If there is unsecured bond, there are no such assets placed as to protection for the bond holder. Convertible bonds and callable bonds. Notice my illustration. You see the bond was the top, and now it's dropped. Convertible, you get it? Convertible bond. Okay, a little counting humor. If a bond is convertible, those bonds can be converted into common stock at the bond holder's options. Again, if a bond is convertible, those bonds can be converted into common stock at the bond holder's option. Let's say that you bought a bond from AT&T. If that bond is convertible, then you will have the right to convert that AT&T bond to AT&T stock. Now, there will be certain information in your contract that indicates what those stipulations are, but if a bond is convertible, the bond holder has the right to convert those bonds into stock. If a bond is callable, hey, Har, calling those bonds. You get it? Cell phones, callable bonds. Okay, last joke. If a bond is callable, it means the bond can be redeemed, bought back before the bond actually matures. Because bonds have a maturity date, could be five years, could be 10 years. But if the bond is callable, that bond can be bought back before its actual maturity date. All right? Stay tuned. We're going to come back with more information about different types of bonds.